Kessler. I am uh, Chandler City Council Member Matt Orlando. As you know, our community has uh, a diverse economy, and unfortunately, through this virus, it's been uh, it's been hit pretty hard in some aspects. Um, I wanted to reach out to you today just to give you some more information on what we're doing in regards to small business and the, help the residents in our community uh, get back from this uh, pandemic. This morning, I have a very special person and a guest, uh, Terry Kimball. She is the CEO of the Chandler Chamber of Commerce. She's been there for nine years, but she has over 30 years experience in, in Chamber of Commerce business. And we do have one of the best Chamber of Commerce, probably in the Western United States. Terry, thank you for all your leadership and work. Well, thank you for those nice compliments. <laughs> hey, Terry, um, I know you've done numerous surveys and you've spoken to the business community throughout the pandemic. What has been the most consistent concerns from our business community? I think it's changed. You know, we've done a, a number of different surveys. When we first started, when this whole thing started, the biggest thing that businesses were concerned about was how are they going to pay their employees? How are they going to stay open? I think we've kind of emerged and in, in, uh, moved on from that. In the latest survey, um, the, the biggest thing is businesses are concerned, how are they going to reopen? How are they going to reopen safely? And then what about that liability from what if one of their employees gets it from one of their customers and so forth? So now we're trying to help businesses navigate that component. The other component that is really still on everybody's mind is how are they going to make this? Um, granted, the PPP, the payroll protection, and some of the other loan programs are starting to come in. However, they haven't brought full staff back. And how are they going to do that? Also, the governor's executive orders on some of the um, landlord components. Um, many of them are trying to work out deals with their landlords, but some of them have not been successful. And so it continues, money, financial, continues to be a, a, a stumbling block. Yeah, and that's a good point. I've been dealing with that myself personally. I've been talking to a lot of small business owners throughout the Valley, and they're sharing the same concerns. You know, uh, my employees, I'm very concerned about them. Uh, can I force someone to wear a mask? Can I not force someone to wear a mask? I put shields up, I don't put shields up. So it's not as simple as just saying, okay, go to business tomorrow. We're gonna work, uh, you know, get going. The other thing is supply chain management. I've seen a lot of businesses tell me they can't get a takeout order. They can't get the big cans of, you know, vegetables or whatever they've been, you know, selling for their kitchens. So it's not just more than just turning on the light switch, I guess. Well, and with that many businesses, you know, with us reopening, we really have to take it in phases because otherwise we're not going to be able to do this efficiently and effectively. Yeah. So, you know, the, the chamber uh, and, and as well as the city economic development department have both provided a lot of resources for our business to utilize. Um, what have you found that most business have been, um, useful from, from your standpoint? They're really hungry for information. Businesses want to do the right thing and want to do it well. They want to reopen. None of us want to stay closed. Right. And so, but they also want to do it the right way. They want to protect themselves, their, their employees, their customers, and also make it beneficial for everybody. So that's one of the things. Also, our weekly small business counseling series, every Thursday we do a quick webinar and we bring in industry experts to talk about things that are on businesses mind whether it was the PPP loans whether it's small business counseling now that customers or now that businesses have received the PPP loans what do they have to do regarding the recording process so that they um, they can record things um, properly um, at the end of the year as well and so we're seeing this whole shift not only that we're through our small business counseling sessions. What we're also seeing is businesses want to know, all right, they're changing the way they do business. Mm -hmm. And what does that new business plan look like? What does that new model look like? Yeah. You know, it, it, this is whole thing is kind of eye opening to me as well, because it seems how vulnerable our service industry really is. Uh, you know, whether it's a hotel, you know, being a former travel myself, you think about it, there's, there's a taxi, there's a hotel, there's food in the hotel, there's food outside the hotel, there's an airplane trip, there's a train trip. 
it, it's really vulnerable to, to so, so hopefully we could be, uh, think about more robustness in the future if something, you know, should happen like this again. Um, so what other resources do you think we could do or have been requested that we could help out here? The biggest thing is businesses are continuing to look for financing and financing options, and that continues to be first and foremost on the forefront. Um, so creating those additional programs to be able to do that. Not only that, uh, our additional education programs and services are critical. Companies still want to network, they still want to be engaged, and how do we do that? So helping them, giving them the educational tools and training them. You know, businesses are in business for what they know that they can do really well. It's all the other things that make the businesses work that they may, they have to brush up on. They have to be on the cutting edge. And so by offering those educational opportunities that the chamber can do has been key critical in moving that businesses forward. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I really want to thank you and your team uh, out there. You've done a great job. Uh, I can't tell how many business called me and say, you know, that your team has actually held their hand walking him through the process of getting the, the loan. Now that That's admirable, and I certainly appreciate that because that's important. They, you know, they're a restaurant. They're, they're manufacturing. Right. They don't, you know, I deal with this government stuff, and their banks were just as confused in, at the beginning as they were. So, I mean, it was a trying time, just more worry for them as well. Um, so, Terry, uh, speaking of trying time, so how is there, how do you think the operation is going to change in the future with our businesses in, in regards to both the governor's orders as well as just our public, public norms of going back to pat, patronizing some of these businesses? Well, we are in constant contact with the governor's office along with key business leaders. The governor has been very forthright and we're actually listening to many of our business owners. In fact, on the call last week with the governor, I think we had six or seven different Chandler businesses that actually gave suggestions on how they want to see opening. The executive orders will continue to change and it's keeping up to date on those. And as we continue to come out of the next phase of recovery, also, businesses have to, what are those things that they're putting in place that are helpful and what are really cumbersome and giving the governor's office that feedback. And we will come out of this and we are going to come out stronger because we are also um, fine tuning our business models. And um, Chandler has a very diverse economy. And because of that, and with our, the ability with especially some of our manufacturers to pivot and make PPP, um, PPE um, components to be able to help during this pandemic. Um, we will come out of this, we will come out of it stronger and continuing to watch those executive orders and then having, going to the chamber website, seeing how we're uh, um, applying that to our local businesses and how can we help guide you on that to get them opened up. Terry, uh, we're running out of time. Unfortunately, I could sit here for another hour talking to you. You're such a smart person. I really appreciate you, you. representing the businesses in our community. I, I really, really cherish our partnership. Uh, it, it, you know, we did a lot of things in channel over the years and the chamber has been with us uh, forefront. And, you know, I, I just can't thank your thousands of volunteers. I mean, remember they're volunteers. You have a small paid staff, but there's mostly volunteers uh, and providing guidance and resource. Terry, thank you again very much. And Chandler, thank you for tuning in. This little snippet of information to help you as a small business owner and as a public understanding what's going on around us. Thank you, council member.